You're now listening to the Garage Guys Fantasy Sports Podcast. Garage fam, welcome back to another episode of the NASCAR Race Recap. The Garage Guys NASCAR Race Recap brought to you by Drip Drop. Go to DripDrop.com right now. Use promo code GARAGEGUYS20 at checkout and you can save 20% on your order. It's the best hydration on the planet. It's used by athletes, firefighters, military members, the Garage Guys, the Garage fam. So it's literally the best. Literally, doctors love it. It's big, big doctor drink, big doctor, big nurse drink. So if they approve it, then you should drink it. And I'm a NASCAR DFS doctor, or maybe I'm just a NASCAR doctor. And, you know, so I approve this message. So get drip drop again, promo code garage guys, 20 at checkout, rip it and drip it. Guys, I bagged finally. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get too heavy into the brag mode, but you know, I got to remain humble, but I, I did it. The Spencer's gift, Spencer's gifts card finally cashes. Kyle fucking Bush plus 1200 total insanity. What a day. What a race. Tons to talk about and unpack. Uh, the DFS day wasn't so bad either, but I don't know. I'm just, I, I had just this ultimate burst of excitement. And at any time you win a big sum of money, you're going to be happy. But it's like it almost wasn't even about the money this time because it was just the fact that, like, I've been down. I've been down. And, and you know, if it wasn't for Dogecoin, if it wasn't for Doge, I would be in a bad place, like, over the past few weeks. It would have been rough. So, luckily, today, and out of all the races, it had to be the one – that had the weirdest name of all for the one of the weirdest guys of all in the NASCAR space. Probably if you don't think I'm a weirdo, you're probably a weirdo too. And that's okay. Cause, cause I love it. By the way, uh, this is the new shirt. Shout out to lefty. I don't know where lefty is. I don't know if, if he's still doing designs or not, but this was one of the first designs that he ever did for us. I finally got to put it on a t-shirt and I think I'm about to get a bunch made. And so if you want one of these shirts, if you would wear one of these shirts to NASCAR events around the house uh, while you're putting in your best bets or your DFS lineups, then you need to let me know because I'm here to say that I'll go get them made and you can buy them. So I love it. And, And this hat, they don't sponsor us, but I just love the way it looks. Literally, it's like bass was put on a pack of red man and I'm about that life, but enough of enough about that. But yeah, I just love the shirt. If you want one of these shirts, hit us up. You know where to find us too in the discord. If you don't have a link to the discord, it's time to get to the discord. Uh, I'll get you a link. You just follow me at garage guy chase, follow drew at chef Boyardine. follow Dale at Dale Tanhart. They will get you a link to the discord. There's no excuses anymore. And if you had had our premium package today, you would have got the betting cards and you could have took the, the risk of your life and gambled on the Spencer's Gifts Gut Boy card, which was my card. You know, any, any anybody who's anybody knows now, usually you want to either pull the trigger on Chef's card or Dale's card. But if you're like me and you want to be wild sometimes, you, you pull the trigger on that. But if you have been pulling the trigger on mine, you probably are still in the hole. I'm still in the hole. Still in the hole in betting, but that's okay. Because this is a good start. We got it to win bet. We're moving on up. But let, let's talk about the race. Kyle Bush comes out of nowhere in the end, takes the win after some insane cautions that started from a caution that uh, is very iffy. And I'm still a little upset about it. I'm still a little pissed. Okay. I tweeted out earlier get your earplugs out. And this is why NASCAR, get your fucking shit together. You fuck Chris Busher. And it was fucked up and you know it. And that's all I'm going to say. So you can take the earplugs out now. Um, after a couple hours of 
thinking about it, though. I mean, I don't think it affected much of how the race turned out. I still think that there would have been some wrecks. There would have been a lot of aggressiveness towards the end of the race. It's Kansas, and we've seen that over and over again. But it this really just it put Chris Buescher in a weird situation. And, you know, I, I just I'm not a fan of it. Not a fan of it at all. And I actually am going to probably be talking about that on the show because when Kyle Bush wins the Bushy McBush race, I need to talk to a Kyle Bush fan. So I'm going to be speaking with Dalton Good, the self proclaimed biggest Kyle Bush fan out there. And he's on NASCAR Twitter. He's never been on the show before. I've been following him for a while. He's going to be stepping in to talk a little bit about Kyle Busch's win, Kyle Busch in general. And we'll talk a little bit about the race and especially the uh, we'll get his takes on what he feels about the caution. So all that to be discussed. But I just wanted to go over some of the stuff that went down this race. Obviously, Kyle Larson, just a dominant force of nature once again and we knew this and we love it because he was in our free video on youtube our nascar dfs video he was in that and not only that he was in the article and if you have premium you got to check the rankings you got to see everything else everybody who's anybody that plays dfs or that watches nascar knows hendrick comes with a force at this track at kansas it's one of the best teams out there at kansas over the years And that's not going to change anytime soon. So if you didn't have him in lineups, I don't know what you were thinking. You were thinking he was going to get wrecked out or you just don't like Kyle Larson. Either way, it's whatever. But it didn't really turn out the best for him towards the end. He didn't win. I think he finished 19th because of the, uh, the the little shuffle he got into with Ryan Blaney. But if you bet on Kyle Busch, that was good for you. And you had to have Kyle Larson in your DFS lineup uh, to cash today. That was a no brainer. So I'm going to look over right now, the, uh, the optimal lineup for DraftKings. looks like it was Kyle Larson, Brad Keselowski, Kyle Bush, Matt DiBenedetto, Daniel Suarez, and Chris Busher. I was about three drivers off uh, from that. Uh, instead of going Kez, I went Elliot. And instead of going to Benedetto, I went Redick. Um, instead of going Suarez, I went Cendric. And they were all for good reasons. This, this, was, this was the Chalky McChalk, Bushy McBush race. There was so much chalk, it was insane. So you couldn't go wrong with any of them, but I uh, ended up scoring top 100. I know that uh, our guy Choose V in the Discord, he had a great day in DFS as well. Uh, shout out to Troy. Um, Troy ended up betting uh, KFB, Mark in Mississippi. He bet KFB. So, yeah, we had a couple people in the Garage Fam win uh, that may have checked out the Spencer's Gifts Gut Boy Novelty card. Spencer's is going to sue us, by the way. They're going to sue me. Um, I just think it's funny. It's a novelty card. You know, I've, I've been so upside down. Why not? But you had to have Larson in there. And, yeah, I think Busher and, like, Suarez, I mean, they just kind of snuck up towards the end. They were just a, a surprise. But there was so much that happened during this race. Starting out, obviously, I wrote up, if you if you have Garage Guys Premium, if you don't, go to garageguysfancysports.com slash premium. Check out our premium packages right now. We have a weekly pit pass, a monthly pass, and an annual package. Annual package is obviously going to be your best value. You'll get everything we have to offer for the rest of the year. And you get two exclusive Discord channels that are locked to everybody else in the Discord where you can discuss your bets, your DFS lineups. It's great shit. We love it. So when we're taking a look at this, obviously Brad K came out pretty strong uh, in this race. He was one of my premium picks that I had written up. And I just felt like the price was a little bit low on him. And when you look into the stats at Kansas, I mean, it's one of the highest percentages of, the, of winners at Kansas start from the pole. Uh, he had a great pit spot position as well. So with him having the pit selection where he was starting, I felt like, you know what, there's going to be so many people that are going to go to Larson, and you should have. Larson was the right call. It was the right play. I mean, we just – everybody knew it. But there was a lot of other little pivots in and out, whatever. Kez was the guy. There was a lot of people, I think, that kind of avoided him just because of his starting position. Maybe people didn't believe in him enough. But it's a Team Penske car. This is a track where you can pick up speed really quickly and you can get going. And as long as you have that clean air, you're going to rocket ship. And we saw that. 
William Byron kind of battered him a little bit right there in the beginning, but for the most part, he took off. And then right there towards the end, once Larson worked his way up to the front, you know, they, it, it all just kind of started shifting. Larson got really aggressive and just like dailed the fuck out of Brad K. Brad had to move. More shuffling went down. Eventually, Kyle Bush goes on to win stage one. So stage one winner. And then that's when that's when the news dropped. And a lot of people may not have looked into it or not. But it was Kyle Bush's birthday. And then the stat dropped. He's never lost a race on his birthday. That is insane. That is insane. And that is something that I didn't know. I didn't know that he never lost a race on his birthday. So when I heard that, my confidence went even higher in the pick that I had made for Brett. Uh, for for I did Brett bad uh, bad K Brad K. I bet Brad, and then I also had Chase Elliott. But for Kyle Busch to never lose on his birthday and to be running as well as he was running, uh, I think I was talking to Dale earlier. He said he had a top three car. And, you know, yeah, he did. He had a fast ass car. It was just, it was beautiful. It all worked out beautifully. It was great, but you know, he was just in the right place at the right time and he kept himself up there and he, and he just, he performed today and it was good to see. And so going from there, uh, I think a couple of the shockers were, were Matt DiBenedetto being in that DFS lineup, being in the big one. He finished fourth. That's a career best for Matt. And especially coming off of last week uh, at, at Dega, where he he had it he had it in the back he had everything he needed and then just made a mistake like he made to give the race away to brad that was just gut-wrenching because it would have been so beautiful for that to be my first hit but it wasn't and the odds would have been higher but i'm not going to complain we're good but good for matt matt needed that more than anything and then so much to be said about tyler reddick so much to be said about Chris Busher. And like I said, I, I'm, I don't think I'm a Chris Busher guy. I think I'm a Chris Busher guy because I feel for him because of the situation that Tyler Reddick's pit crew made where the tire was uncontrolled, rolls out, NASCAR doesn't call the caution. And then Chris is just thinking, okay, well, I'm in that same position a lot of these other guys are in. I'm going to stay out here and I'm just going to wait for them to call the caution. And then I'm good and I'm leading. That would have been incredible. Would have been incredible to see something like that. But NASCAR didn't do it. So is there a conspiracy? Do they hate Chris? I don't know. I'll talk to Dalton a little bit about it. But to see him get that top 10, that is pretty epic. Um, I was teetering between him and Ryan Priest for a top 10, and I just picked the wrong guy. I picked the wrong guy. I thought maybe, hey, maybe Priest. He's He had some top 10s earlier in the year. Maybe he can make it happen here. Wasn't the case. So, Busher gets that done. And then Tyler Reddick did get a top 10 finish. He finished seventh. Uh, it was another bet on my card that I had. So, shout outs to Red Dog because Red Dog was ripping some fucking top early in the race. I was loving it. I had a bet on him to win at plus 5,500. And anytime I see plus 5,500 on a guy that is a dirt racer that can ride the wall, and especially after the first race he did at Kansas where he wasn't even full time. Like I wanted Red Dog, and when I saw those odds, I was like, "This is a no-brainer." I think I had like 0.6 units on it; would have equaled out to 33 units, which is just insane. And for him to go through the penalty and then the cautions to shake out the way they did for him to come back and get that top ten was huge. So at least he did deliver on that. Um, but looking at some of the disappointments, obviously, you know, Joey Logano fell back. I think he worked up to like fourth right before the end of the race, but he was uh, he was in a shitty situation because he had some food poisoning. So I was wondering if we were going to get some Tony Stewart shit. I didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, so him falling back, uh, he was definitely somebody that a lot of people could have pivoted to, but luckily I decided that I wasn't going to play him in a bunch of lineups and everything worked out the way it needed to. Truex coming in with the top six. He was a guy that I had wrote up in premium as well. I think he started 15th, finished sixth. Not not bad. Could have been better. Whatever, we'll take it. Uh, and then Kevin Harvick having a, having a good finish in second. So I, I didn't get to listen to the interview with Harvick. I didn't get to really see what they said, but they were asking kind of like, do you think things are turning around? And you've got to believe at some point in the season that he's going to eventually get a win. You just don't really know where it's going to be at. 
Um, and I did commit and say earlier in the year that he would wasn't going to get a lot of wins, but he would at least get one win. So no telling where that could come. We'll see what happens. And I think we got to look here at Denny Hamlin. He had some shitty luck. He was, uh, I think, Dale's favorite on his card. And so it just sucks for him. Towards the end of the race, Chastain freaked me out because he came out of nowhere. Mellow man just getting it. And he ended up thinking one of the Xfinity race. So when I'm seeing him do what he's doing and Kurt Busch isn't doing that with Chip Ganassi, I'm just like, this sucks. But he ended up falling back. And I think that uh, Chef Boy had a lot of Chastain. So if we would have seen Chastain finish in that top 10, that would have been incredible. I know for Chef Boy, it would have been a big day. But unfortunately, that's not always how these races sh- shake out. And in this case, there was just a lot of crazy shit. So Ricky Stenhouse was probably the craziest one. He was a guy we had in our free picks. And he ended up getting completely out of the race. He was just out there, just just killing it, just causing shit left and right. Um, towards the end there, he was he was the caution master. And look, we love Ricky. I love Ricky to death. Um, he a wild boy. And so that's the risk you take with, with playing Ricky. And I was willing to take that risk. And I did play some Ricky today. So those lineups obviously didn't do too hot. But as I said, it could have been way worse. Still still got into that top 100 spots, and, and I'm okay with that. I'm happy with that. That's good, a good return on a $4 entry, winning uh, close to 80 bucks. So I cannot complain at all. Uh, the woes continue for Eric Amarola. I don't even want to get in deep to that. I'm just sitting here looking over this finishing positions of these drivers, and I'm just – it's not even so much SHR anymore. It's just Eric Amarola just is horrible. Like, don't want nothing to do with him at all. And you got to wonder, what's going to happen? Is he going to go to a new team? Is Are they really going to give him another contract? Who knows? Alex Bowman was one of the drivers disappointed. Um, I know Chef Boy had him on his card, and a lot of other people were looking at him. And he was kind of like a one of the – Closer favorites, I guess you would say. He was priced up very heavily in DFS. Uh, he had some issues throughout the race. Just unforeseen shit, and it happens like that sometimes. You can't always control it. But the race itself was good, and I enjoyed Kansas. I thought Kansas was fun. It's a fast track. You know, the little trioval. It's got little shades of Dega sometimes, but it's just not Dega. But I love the comparisons they were making up there. And I think that the most memorable thing about this race was Mike Joy saying Bushy McBush and making it sound like it was just this acceptable thing that you would hear, uh, like like somebody being given an award at like a banquet where people had to wear tuxedos. You know, it's like there's only one guy that can make that happen, and that's Mike Joy making Bushy McBush sound just so proper. Um. I don't know, just overall incredible day. Loved everything that went down, loved everything that happened. And like I said, the bets were good. You heard the optimal lineup there. Suarez was, like I said, just the way that it shook out in the end. You, just, you didn't see it coming. It, this race kept you on your toes. And I couldn't be more happier. I'm just, I'm excited for Darlington coming up this week. It's going to be great. And at this point, I guess in the show, I'm ready to hear what a Kyle Busch fan has to say about Kyle Busch winning his first race um, of the NASCAR season. He's already won the clash, but the official one. And for me coming out saying that he had six wins, he was going to have six wins this season. If we count the clash, that's two. We got four more to go. So we got to make this come true, Kyle. If you're watching this, Kyle, if you find it, you channel the inner Kevin Dinica and make those other four wins happen. So that would be incredible. But once the wins get started, it's hard to uh, to keep that good man down. So we'll see what happens for KFB. Uh, but let's go ahead. We're going to go ahead and bring in Dalton Good. Let's talk to Dalton, see what he thought about the race, thought about Kyle Busch, and just get to know him a little bit more. So let's call him in. Here we go. All right, now welcoming on to the first time uh, for the first time ever, Kyle Bush fan, 
First and foremost, Kyle, Kyle Bush fan. It's Dalton Good uh, of NASCAR Twitter. I've been following Dalton now for a while. Uh, he's the, uh, the cocky guy on the Twitter space because Kyle Bush is a cocky guy. So I feel like all Kyle Bush's fans have to be cocky. Like you have to really develop the tough exterior because of all the hate and shit that's thrown at you on like a daily basis. So, so uh, before we even like talk a little bit about the race or whatever, um, how good did it feel today that we're not seeing a repeat of 2020? Oh, dude, it's such a relief because uh, finally I don't have to uh, be pissed off every single week of the whole season until the playoffs start. Like I could, now that the win is oh, uh, finally got a win out of the way, you know, I could just relax, take it easy for the rest of the regular season, and then. Once the playoffs start, that's when my blood pressure is going to go up again. But, uh, but yeah, finally uh, got the win today and uh, pretty much got the season started for Kyle. You know, like, because really all it takes is just one win to get him going. So now he's he's going to be going. So hopefully we got, like, uh, three or four more wins on the way and uh, we get some going and uh, try to make a run in the playoffs. Hell yeah, man. So you're, I see, I'm looking at the background now. Obviously we've got, we got uh, University of Tennessee, that's Nashville right. Predators, and then we have – your your Kyle Bush flag. So you're you're from Tennessee as well. Yep. I also got a uh, Panthers flag over there. And a Panthers. Uh, flag. How does that work? How are you not a Titans fan? Okay. Well, here's a, here's the story. So I started the NFL. I, I used to hate football. As a matter of fact, like back when I was little, I just didn't want to watch any other sports. Because I thought, okay, well, that, that NASCAR the best. Screw every other sport. Like I'm I'm boycotting every sport and just watching NASCAR. But uh, I did one off season back in like uh, 2010. I just kind of got bored during the offseason. I'm like, well, this sucks. I, I need something to watch. And, you know, my dad's always been a football fan. And I finally started watching with him. And uh, I said, you know what? I got no, nothing going on. Let's just try watching football. And, uh, of course, he's a Vols fan. Uh, my mom's side of the family is Oregon fans because they're all from Eugene, Oregon. Uh, so they oh, watch wow. Fo- yeah, so they watch That's a mix, games. man. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's how my mom and dad met, by the way. They met, like, at an Oregon UT football game. No way. That's a cool yeah. story, man. Sports sports are always connecting people, man. It's, it's great stuff. So you uh so you said 2010. How how old are you, man? Uh right now I'm uh 22. You're 22. Be, okay. So you started watching you started watching football right around the time I graduated high school. That was when like Cam Newton was leaving Auburn. He was getting ready to get drafted by the Panthers. Yeah, the first so, the first national championship I watched ever watched was Oregon and uh, Auburn. That's when Cam Newton was obviously the epic. Okay. That year, so, yep. Yeah. So that's good stuff, then, man. That's awesome. So, so obviously you've been a NASCAR fan for a long time, and then today we get this win. And it, what's funny is, is that I said in the beginning of the year, um, me and uh, me and Drew were talking about, you know, kind of like our, our, our outlooks on the season, and I, I automatically said Kevin Harvick is not going to have a good year. I'd be surprised if he got one win, but if he does get a win, it'll be one win. So I'm still sticking true to that, and I'm looking pretty good in that department. Um, the other side of it was I said that Kyle Bush would have six wins. So I was very ballsy. So yeah. we've got two. Like, I mean, he won He won the, uh, the, the Daytona Road Course, basically the Clash. Yeah. I don't know if that really counts, but I'm going to count really. it. Yeah. I'm going to count it just because. Because I said six. It was a pretty big number. I wasn't wasn't really thinking it through. So so we'll go with five, but plus one for that race. So today this makes two races. He's won in in 2021. So that is that is factual. So now now we only have four to go. So uh, there's obviously tracks we know that he can do it at and they're on they're coming up. I'd love to see him win at some tracks that he hasn't won at, which isn't many. But it, it is it is a relief to see the win today. I know it was good to just see him get out and just cry it out. And it was good for me because it was good for my wallet. You know, I'm a NASCAR fan. If, if you 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 keep up, we mean you follow each other on Twitter. So you obviously right. know enough that I, I'm a big better and do a lot of DFS. So I have different drivers from week to week that I'm a fan of. This week, I'm a Kyle Bush fan. So I don't know if you want to call it bandwagon fan. I, I call it a betting fan. I like that. Yeah, big KFB guy this week. So it was good yeah. to see that. And especially after the news with Samantha and them, uh, you know, with, with everything with the baby, it sucks. And, and you know, it's uh, that's got to be a tough situation. So I know that a win like this gets, can get the energy back rolling. And, and you know, they're going to keep rocking and rolling doing that. And Brexton, he's already in the car now. So their family's just kind of like in the zone. But did you notice anything different about Kyle after this race? Uh, yeah, I mean, usually – 
he would be a little cocky after that win. But, uh, you know, of course, I did expect him to be a little bit emotional because of what happened to Samantha this past week. Uh, really, Kyle's changed ever since 2019. Like, I, I remember 2019 was where Samantha started having so many miscarriages. Uh, and that's that's when he was depressed. Like, once the playoffs began, I remember he won the Indy uh, Nationwide race. And he gets out of the car. He's not even happy. He's not even smiling. I'm like, what's what, what's going on? I, I that's why I began to think that something was wrong. I didn't know if there was a relationship issues. Uh, of course, it's none of my business. I'm not gonna dig around trying to figure that out. But you're uh, good. You're a good person. You don't try to pry in other people's mess. Right. right, right. And then, of course, there was a bunch of rumors saying that oh, Kyle is cheating on Smith. I'm like, listen, I know Kyle's. Look, I'm not to be a creep, but I know Kyle and Samantha well enough that they would never do that to each other because these two love each other. They've been through a lot, and they keep fighting together. You know, why would you ever come up with that rumor? But uh, then, of course, it was finally announced uh, in the uh, awards banquet in Nashville that Samantha had all those miscarriages, and that's why Kyle was so upset. Like, during the final last 10 race, I'm like, oh, okay, well, there you go. That's that's the reason why. So that clears everything up. And, of course, uh, unfortunately for Samantha, it just keeps – I, I really hate to see that. You know, your favorite driver and their couple just struggling so much. Right, with Brexit. the off-track stuff. And, and, and sure. all they want is just a sibling for Brexit, and then they're done. Like, they don't want any more. They just want a baby girl pretty much. So, you know, they get, Samantha can have the girl, and uh, Brexit, uh, Kyle can have the boy pretty much. Yeah, you know? it's, just, it's the all-American family. I mean, who doesn't want that? You know, I'm a, I'm a dad myself, so it's like, you know, I have, I have a son. So as a parent, like, I, t- I totally get, like, where they're coming from. <sighs> And uh, but but the thing that that I will say about him is that there there seems to be like yeah there's milder cockiness he's got a little bit more humbleness to him and I think that 2020 probably knocked him on his ass pretty good but uh, the mental game that was my big thing last year I was like dude you just gotta like find a way to just you know get your get your fucking chi you know what I mean like do some meditation whatever it takes like do some outside the box shit and uh, so but like you said before the win the wins here so now we just gotta keep that momentum rolling. And there, there's been a lot to unpack from this race. Uh, briefly kind of covered some things. And I wanted to, to have somebody to debate this with. And so you're here now. I mean, you can talk about this. I think the most controversial thing about this race was the loose tire from Tyler Reddick that went out and they waited. NASCAR waited to call the caution until after everyone came through the pits. Now, does that scream uh, conspiracy, collusion, or uh, manipulation to you? Any of those three words ring a bell when you think of this thing? I kind of want to say yes. Um, it, it's it's typical NASCAR. I mean, they've done this many a times. You know, they're, they've been inconsistent with cautions for a long time. I knew that was going to be a caution, but I really didn't think – them waiting that long did not make sense at all because I remember a lot of loose tires that – uh, were loose on pit road during green fly pit stops and they would wave a caution right away. And this time, this was probably the first time I remember that they waited till like the end of green flag cycle for the way the caution. And I'm like, well, what are you guys doing? Like either wave it or don't, you know, I mean, it's far away. I mean, nobody's going to hit it. Uh, as long as a stupid crew member doesn't go out to get, I mean, you're fine. Like, yeah. that, like I remember Atlanta 2009 that, uh, Marcus Ambrose, uh, pit crew was, uh, their tire rolled onto the trioval and it was, approaching the racetrack and then he decides to just run out there and grab a hold of it like all the way in the middle for the tribal grass like just wait for him to get run over by a spinning car and then that's what made the caution but right that was just very odd to see i have i have a theory and i want to see if i sound too crazy for this um i think that nascar hates chris busher because they fucked him they fucked him bad they really did i I won't lie about that they really so so let's 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 ponder on this, Dalton. If if Brad K was up there where Busher was, do you think the caution would have been called earlier, or would he have had to cycle through as well? If anybody you know else would have been up there, like or, or Daniel Suarez, or uh, let's see who else, Ricky Stenhouse, or or if it would have been Bubba or Ross Chastain, like just somebody that is not like you know the star big stars. Like, well, I guess Bubba's kind of a big star now. Like NASCAR yeah. media has done a really good job with that. So it's like the these guys that are like I guess you would say like middle tier, lower tier. It's like mm-hmm. Chris Buescher already had like an amazing like stage one. He won stage one at Homestead, didn't he? Oh yeah, he, and he and it was no fluke. Like he was up there up front. Yeah. 
And he he was there. Him. Like, yeah. like that should he should have been in first. They should have called the caution. So it's like, it made me think and wonder, because like there's some people there saying that screwed the whole race up. I don't think it screwed the whole race up because they were going to call that caution regardless. Right. Um, and, and I was at a point where I was like, I don't think they need to call the caution at all if they haven't called it already. Yeah. They just let it roll, let Chris go in, no cautions called, keep going. And everything will kind of cycle itself out and it'll be, it'll be normal. But when they waited for him to come in and then he got back out there on the track, took some laps and then they called it like that really threw me off. And I'm still trying to put the pieces together. So uh, if you want to look at uh, maybe a Kyle Bush side of things, um, I don't think it really helped, but there are some people that have, that have, that could probably say that, you know, we all know Kyle Bush has never lost a race on his birthday. And I knew that, which was kind of like one of those like underlying, cause I, I bet on like, like shit that like people that actually bet on things are not supposed to bet on sometimes. Like I get all, you know, like weird with it. And I'm like, he's never lost a race on his birthday. I'm like, I'm about to throw this money down. Like, let's go. And then plus I just thought that he was going to be able to run well here. And, uh, and so it's like how everything shaked out. It's like, obviously Larson got, got in with Blaney and Hamlin kind of like screwed himself as well. So I don't really think that that was the major issue, but what if all that was done so that Kyle Busch could win on his birthday? I wouldn't be mad about it. I'm just sad for Chris. Yeah. I mean, I don't want, I don't want to say they did that just for Kyle to win on his birthday, but I do agree with you on the part where if it was somebody else besides Chris Busch, I feel like they would have called a caution right away, like Brad Kozlowski or uh, a big Kyle star of NASCAR. Well, Kyle Larson, Danny Hamlin, uh, Ryan Blaney, all those guys. Yeah, I can definitely see that. But I just don't understand, like, why – like, like either wave it or don't, you know? I mean, it's it's not going to go on the track. It's just staying put right there. It's not really going to hurt anything. And like my joy said, you know, it's not really harming anybody. It's not harming the track. It's not harming drivers or nothing. So I just feel chilling. Like just, yeah, there's just no point, I don't feel like. And, it harmed my DFS lineups, though, because I wanted Tyler – I mean, Tyler Reddick still got a top 10, still catched a good bet there. Had him in some DFS lineups. But they, it was looking – he was looking strong early on, and I thought he was going to be able to rip top and get up there to the front. If he would have won, that would have been a $5,500 hit off of 100 bucks. Oh, my God, dude. That would have been, that would have been incredible, but – I just I knew that after that that went down, I was like, this is gonna be a tough feat. But for him to get all the way back to the top ten was incredible. But it just sucks that it happened. But yeah, dude, it, it's literally sitting there in the grass. Like if if a car gets in a wreck and it goes off into the grass and it hits a tire, I don't think the tire is gonna do too much more shit than the grass would probably do to it, you know, with everything else. So I don't get it, man. It's just that was the weirdest. I think that was the first time. I can honestly say that I have seen other than when Clint Boyer did the spinny spin back in the gap. I think this is the first time I've I've seen some kind of like low key manipulation, man. Because it's I, I've seen it to where they would call caution so early when people started cycling out. Like I remember Pocono last year. I think Brad Kozlowski was a product of that. And then going into this though, yeah, it's just it's a shame for Chris. I might be a low key Chris Busher fan just because of this to defend him. You should have like an imaginary trial. You I mean, know, I got nothing against Chris Busher. You know, I'd like for him to be successful. He wears the Carhartt jackets a lot. Big Carhartt guy. (laughs) One thing I wanted to point out, I just love how uh, Cody Ware spun out on pit road entry. No caution. Yeah. Yeah, the entire, like, pretty much the same spot that Cody Ware was in, like, except, you know, a pit road exit, and they wave a caution. Like, and they wait till after pit cycle. They do a really good job at being invisible to NASCAR. Because I don't think the people in the booth can see them. No. You know, the camera people can, but NASCAR, just, you know, get that shit out of here. You know, I ain't seen no, no, nothing. No, I put a blindfold on. I like what I'm seeing. <laughs> yeah. It was just, I don't know. It's strange. Like, they say, like, I feel like maybe NASCAR is sweating in their pants every race because it's like, you know, this is supposed to be the best season ever. So, it's like, right. we, we can't just have Kyle Larson just run all these laps today and dominate this race and then not have some crazy shit happen. Like, we've got to figure something out. And then all of a sudden, like, an accident like that happens. Let's take advantage. I don't know. Maybe I'm being too deep. Maybe I'm getting too deep conspiracy. I don't know. Well, this reminds me of the Daytona road course race this year. You know, Chase Elliott was running away. I mean, of course, Chase Elliott dominates all the road courses. And as soon as he took the lead, I'm like, well, Chase Elliott won this race. I mean, I wasn't hoping for a caution. I just wanted it to play out to see what happens. I, I was concerned if Chris Bell actually was going to catch him under green. I would have liked to see if that would have happened. But – uh then they wait the caution for rain at a track where it's okay to run in the rain. Like, and it wasn't even that much either. And they decided to wait the caution and like try to make people decide they want to put rain tires on or not. I'm like, 
was this really necessary? And then, of course, you saw the end of the race where it just kept getting chaotic, 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 and chaotic. And that, that really frustrated me, especially it affected Kyle, too, because, you know, he, yeah. he, had a, he had a top five going after he wrecked on lap one. I thought, well, you know what? I'm not going to be mad. I mean, this is going to be a good day. It could have been worse. And then they made it worse. <laughs> so It hurt like, me. It hurt me bad because I had Logano to win that. And he was like one of my three bets. So I had Elliot, I had Logano, and I think I had, I want to say I might have had, uh, I don't think I had Kyle, but I had like uh, one of like Michael McDowell had some really good odds or something and, or not, not, not really good. It's never really good. I mean, there's a lot. Yeah. Michael McDowell wins the race. You're going to win a ton. I think it was like 10,000 for the Daytona 500 for a yeah. hundred bucks. So it's a huge payout. And, uh, but, but yeah, when Chase, when that happened with Chase, man, I think they're having like a low key, like hangover from the championship, man. I don't know. He got top five like, today, though. Yeah. So. I feel like Kyle Bush is getting uh, Chase Elliott that championship hangover disease, whatever it is. I uh, feel like Kyle's energy from last year might be rubbing off on Denny some, man. Like, I mean, he's like, I mean, Denny's up there doing well, but he just, he can't fucking close. I don't. I wouldn't compare Kyle's 2020 season to Denny Hamlin's season this year. I mean, Hamlin's running a lot better. And to be honest with you, I'm actually surprised that Kyle actually won before Denny Hamlin. I yeah, I remember they kept asking after Truex got his first win at Phoenix. Uh, everybody was like, you know, which JGR car is going to win next, Hamlin or Bush? I'm like, it's it's sure as hell going to be Denny Hamlin. And I, and I seriously, I thought because Hamlin was running a whole lot better than Kyle was at the start of the season. And right. No, and I've been course, betting on Hamlin like every other race, man. Like, I mean, if I would have had top fives on him, I'd be like rolling it right now. But today I bet a top five on him and it didn't come through because of him going a lap down and then the crap happening right there at the end. It was it was close to it, but it just didn't come through. But yeah, it's uh it's strange, man, because like usually didn't like last year, and, and we talked about it a lot here. We talk about it in our Discord all the time. It's just last year, Kevin and Denny were so dominant because they figured it out before everybody else. Well, now everybody's had two months of an off season to figure it out. And yeah. so I think that's why you're just seeing all this wild shit going down, like with Chris Bell winning the the road course race. Like that was just unexpected as hell. Like I never would have thought I didn't expect that. it either. I'm you kind of low-key look like Chris Bell, like you're really like his cousin. You should be a Chris Bell fan. You could, you like, could, you could like trick Christopher people. Bell. I do like Christopher Bell, but the one thing I don't like about Chris Bell is Adam Stevens being there. Yeah. <laughs> well, k- kind of. Like, it, it's just the whole thing where uh, when I saw Kyle get interviewed with uh, Graham Bansinger, I think that's how you pronounce it, and he was talking about, you know, the frustrations with Adam Stevens that whole 2020 season and the offseason. Kyle wanted personnel changes, and Adam Stevens was like, no, it's either my way or the highway. And then Kyle said, okay, I'm just going to go off and do my own thing. That kind of frustrated me, but – that's the only part, bad part about it, but overall, I mean, I like Chris Bell. I, I want to see JGR cars be successful, and as a matter of fact, I like how the 20 teams finally doing good because pretty much ever since 2017, that 20 team has been like definitely the black sheep of JGR, and yeah. they finally got somebody that can actually compete in there. Is but see like that, and that's what I'm wondering too. Is like, I mean, I know Eric Jones won like I think it was like Darlington in 2019. He won and there. Daytona in and they. Yeah, and there in Daytona, and then he had the clash. I think it was the last. I think the last race he won was a clash. Yeah. And so it's like looking at looking at all of that. It's like you wonder. Like I mean, obviously I've seen that. Like there's a lot better of a running with Chris Bell than there is Eric Jones. But it's uh, at first I wasn't so happy. Like I, I didn't really like a lot of Chris Bell. Like back in the day, you know, I was kind of really weary of him because he would always burn me and on like DraftKings and stuff. Mm-hmm. But like. This year, I've been a little bit more heavier on him. Like, for some odd reason, I just up and decided, like, hey, I'm going to bet on Chris Bell to win the Daytona 500. And he led a good bit of laps there, but then he had the tire go down. But JGR as a whole, man, like, I'm not going to lie. Like, the more I've gotten into it, I I grew up just – my dad was like, if you like anything other than Chevys, like, I'm going to – you're going to be emancipated. So just know that. (laughs) And so I was just like, okay – I've got to like, you know, team Hendrick or like RCR. And then my dad, like Jeff Gordon. So obviously I was like, well, man, you got a lot of rules. So I'm going to just like Dale Earnhardt and that's going to be it. Cause I was a you know young kid. So it was all Chevy's for me, but now that I'm older, I don't really, you know, have like a favorite driver. I got a lot of drivers that I'll fuck with, but I can just kind of do whatever I want on a weekly basis. But I'm digging Toyota, man. I really yeah. am this year. The JGR team itself, just Denny's got the swag. Kyle's got the tenure. Chris Bell, I don't, I don't really know. He hasn't. The personality's not like all the way there. Like he's kind of right. like he's still kind of like bubble and dry. And then yeah. Truex is just like you know the old guy that likes to fish and is yeah, also yeah. a low key diva. 
at times. <laughs> yep. So you got to give – I don't know. Like there's, a, there's a lot to, to love over there at JGR right now, and obviously they're one of the best teams in NASCAR. Oh, right. And um, them adding Bubba on too was uh, – they, they've got to get the fucking together with that, yeah. man. I don't know. Like it just – I feel like the charter team for that – like I know, I know MJ sitting at home every week, and you and you if you've watched the Last Dance, you know what kind of guy MJ is. He ain't having this shit. He's not happy. Right. It's like him and Steve Kerr. Like I would be worried if I were Bubba because at any given moment, Michael Michael Jordan could come to your window and just, just like slap you in the face and just be like, "Hey, like you need to get your shit together. Here, watch my these copies of the Last Dance." Like yeah. he's getting his own Netflix documentary. Like, he's got to get a win this year. That's a lot of shit. But well, here's- Here's the thing about 23 XI. I did not expect them to do good at all this to start this year. You know, usually when it comes to rookies or new teams, you know, I'd like to give them three years. And you definitely got to give that team three years because, well, number one, I mean, it's a new team. You got to figure stuff out and get things rolling. So that's going to take a long time, right? Right. And definitely next year is going to be a pass, too, because of the Gen 7 car. A lot of people are going to be learning with that, too. And year three is where I start to say, you know, okay, you better pr- – you better – show me something here yeah and, but i would i would have never said you know we gotta we're gonna win two races this year i i feel like that was a little too far a little too cocky mj don't give a shit man he's just like yeah. he sets the intention and it's like he just expects it to be done because if he and like that's the one thing i will say about mj is he's like i would never ask you to do something that i couldn't do myself so right. if he would have said he's gonna win two races i'd have been like mj it's time to get the suit on guy like yep. you got to go win two races now. So he said we expect it. So that's good. But yeah, there's a huge learning curve, man. I mean, he's literally changing manufacturers. He's got new people on board. They got a new team. Who knows how? I mean, this team was put together in like what two months? Oh yeah. Like that, it, it's insane. And then and then you know the great people of of the NASCAR social media world. A lot of them are impatient fucks, and we know that much. <laughs> yeah, yep. And so it's like, and then there's just a lot of people that were just rubbed the wrong way by all the shit that went down last year, and they just are like, quick to throw the shit. Bubba put out that big thread a couple of weeks ago. So, I mean, I dig that he is the way he is. I've, I've got to talk with Bubba a little bit when we were in Talladega, and I love his mindset. Like, and I, I, I love the fact that he's just like, he don't, he ain't, af- he's not afraid to like show you who the fuck he is. That's like the biggest thing for me. Yeah, but, I, like uh, that. I like that. He's got to, yeah, but he, it's going to come. He just got to get his mental game right, dude. Like, that's why I was, t- I, I put a tweet out a couple, uh, about a week ago. And I was like, I hope he just starts Marshawn Lynch in the media. Like, Kyle does it, and the media just yeah, yeah. kind of laughs it off, you know? But it's like, if Bubba does it, everybody wants to write these fucking mean stories and shit. It's like, no, if Kyle can do it, let Bubba do it. It doesn't matter about how good right. you are in the car. If you don't want to talk to somebody, don't talk to him. And so if that helps him, I think that he should do it. And I'm in the media, so it's me saying that. Like I'm just I'm being real with it. But how, what do you what are you thinking about this reveal that's coming up? Are you uh, have you we we obviously we got the leak of the Ford, and we got the leak of the Chevy, but we didn't get the leak of the Toyota. Do you think there's a reason? Could it still be the Supra? Because I'm hoping it's the Supra, but I, it's probably not the Supra. No, no, no. It's 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 definitely the Camry. It's not it's not gonna be a Supra. We didn't they, see it on the leaked photo, so it could be a Supra. Like well, they might Toyota's, have to come back. Toyota's racing actually confirmed it was the uh, Camry that it was coming. It, they did not say anything about the Supra. Like, they have it on their profile. It's, it's definitely the Camry. I was actually surprised that it's still going to be the Camry. I mean, especially with Supra coming up to the Xfinity Series, I thought, okay, well, the Supra's got to be coming to the Cup Series sooner or later, right? Well, it's a spaceship, dude. It's a fucking spaceship. That's what it looks like. I would love to have one of those. There's a yellow one, like, right next to me. Like, as I'm passing work, I'm like – I want that so bad because I work at a graphic shop like in uh, Smyrna, Tennessee, where I like uh, wrap trucks. And I, if I wanted to, I could make like M and M's decals, and I could just put that. Just straight up make an M and M Supra, yeah. I've, and I, I've seen the Camrys. Yeah, I said shout out to Smyrna. Our girl Jensie Stinson's over in Smyrna. We know, we we know, we know. Jen, Smyrna, Smyrna is the place to be. It's Nashville. Just, and there's a lot of little places outside of Nashville. Every, I, I everybody's in Nashville. Yeah, I'm in Murfreesboro. Uh, I was in Johnson City, which is about 15 minutes away from Bristol, but I moved to Murfreesboro uh, three years ago to attend college. I'm graduating, and now I'm just uh, – I'm working at this place called All Van. It's a trucking company. I'm, I'm a graphic installer for all the trucks that come in. That's like, dope, I, man. Yeah. I so do you do graphic a, design? Oh, yeah. I, I have a uh, – uh, excuh, excuse me. A degree in graphic design. It's downstairs in my uh, diecast collection. That's killer, dude. Yep. 
That's what I want we're, to we're gonna have to hit you up, man. We we've we've been working with we've been working with Lefty for a long time. Like right, right when he came onto the scene, I hit him up. And actually, this is one of those shirts right here. This, oh, this is one of, I like that. This is one I of really Lefty's like cars. I think Lefty left us on social media. I don't. I haven't seen him lately. I think he put a tweet out or something. No, but I think he switched accounts. Maybe so. Yeah. But this is like an OG design, and so if you're doing graphic design, I might have to holler at you. So I, I'm definitely like a. I'm more of a logo design. I'm actually trying to design a shirt for Nashville. Uh, I like this before my computer got messed up. Like I was doing a shirt of Kyle smashing his guitar. I have an idea for that. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't know what happened. But I was up. My computer needed an update. I said, ah, okay, I should probably update it. And I was in the middle of designing that shirt. Like I just got started, and then the update came up that I had. I've got to see this shit. Well, it hasn't been released yet. Like I just got started. I, I still got to figure everything out because I don't. I never did t-shirt design at school. Like it was just like other projects and stuff like that. Yeah. But anyway, I, I updated the computer, and my uh, like all my apps disappeared. And I, and I can't find them. I don't know where they went. I got to get my stepdad. He's an IT guy, so I'm trying to get him over here to see. They're in the dark going. cloud. Yeah, where, where it's all at. I don't. A lot of lightning. Have, you got to be careful. Flash drives get burnt there. It yeah. made me so mad. But like, what, once I get it running, I'm going to make a shirt for uh, Kyle Bush's uh, Guitar Smash for Nashville. And I, 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 I might give it to some people. I don't know. but uh, That's going to be epic, though. I mean, I'll get one because we're going to be coming to Nashville. So I'll, we'll be I'll in Nashville. I'll give you one. Yeah. So, so we, I hope, I hope to see you in Nashville. So I'm definitely I, I know, going. I already got my tickets. So yeah, and 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 one thing I remember having a, a conversation with you about was your dad makes the best hot wings. That's right. So you need to tell you need to tell Papa Good that he's got to bring the wings because because we we may have we may have a certain situation. You know, <laughs> everybody that's listening to this show, I've already talked about the big news. There's big news going to be dropping at the end of the day on monday so get ready for that but yeah we may have an area we have something set up for the the wings man so All that's right. what I'm, I'm ready for i'm a big wings guy shout out to prince's hot chicken i've been there a few times in nashville great place I gotta, um, go, I gotta go try that place out where's it at is it downtown nashville no i can't remember the neighborhood but it's by where chef boy lives so it's, it's over around chef boy's part of the woods in nashville it's like uh it's like on a big hill and there's a chick-fil-a that's probably every corner though Okay. Yeah, I gotta go try that place. I gotta go try we'll that place. Figure it out. out. I haven't. I haven't. Been, I never go downtown much, but yeah, I should. Be, I should definitely go try that place out because I. I'm. I need to start trying more wings. I used to not eat wings. I'm a. I'm the pickiest eater in the United States of America. I never ate wings back in the day, and oh, I never eat. I never eat any of my mom or dad's cooking. But uh, if dad makes good, if I eat some of dad's wings at home, then he's done something. Like uh, I'm, I'm trying to start more food. Uh, trying more foods like it's i'm just so picky i'm used to got to you got to be a culinary expert at some point you got to get yeah. around you got to try all the good stuff so uh I'm, I'm looking forward to it i'm looking forward to seeing you in nashville man getting to meet you and a lot of other people too I've, i know that there's gonna be a ton of people out there uh oh, yeah. looking forward to the shirt but but dalton dude thanks so much for joining us talking a little bit about i know you're pumped kfb kyle fucking bush is back kind of let's, let's go look at him look at him all right where can everybody follow you at dalton all right, you guys can follow me at uh, Dalton Good 18 on Twitter. You can also follow me on uh, at Dalton Rowdy Bush 18 at uh, Instagram. Uh, and that's pretty much about it. So uh, give me a follow, guys. All right, that's it. All right, Dalton, thanks so much for coming on, man. We're about to roll into some voicemails. All right, thanks, buddy. I appreciate you. No worries. Big Kyle Bush guy. So good talk. Uh, before we go, it's time to get into voicemails. So Garage Fam did hit some voicemails for us. We got three. Haven't listened to them yet. Instant reaction. We're going to play them. We're going to see what happens and see how things turned out for some of you in the Garage Fam. And as always, we appreciate you guys. If you're not in the Discord, all you have to do is ask. You know this by now. It's that simple. All right, so first one, don't see a name on here. Let's play it. Three in a row, six out of eleven. I, I'm guessing that was that was uh, that that's Mark. That's Mark. So Mark, yes, three in a row. He's hitting bets. I think he had. Uh, I think he had Kyle Bush as well today. So Mark the OG. Mark actually asked me uh, on Twitter what OG meant. And Mark, I know you're listening right now. Uh, Mark from Mississippi. 
You're no G. You go to the casino and you place bets while everyone else is betting them on their phones. So kudos to you, my man. You're killing it. Keep killing it. Keep doing it. We love it. All right. Next voicemail. Here we go. What's up, y'all? It's Uncle D. I bet, I bet heaven today. Again, old lady's pissed. I just, I keep stealing money out of the shop door and I keep losing it all on fucking Diddy Hamlin and fucking Joey Logano. Oh my God. What are we going to do? I mean, I thought I was going to do good with Larson coming from the back, but no, you know, we had different plans with the Blaney boy. Uh, another one bites the dust. Got all chased, glad you got the bag, homie. Uncle D's going to be getting a second job to pay for all these losing bets I keep getting. <laughs> Stay pimping, y'all. Uncle D, yeah. I always love getting calls from Uncle D. Look, Uncle D, I'm going to tell you like this one, man. You can't be any worse than I have been this season, okay? I got, I got, I, I'm going to stay humble, okay? I was excited, but you guys know I'm going to stay humble because I have had the shittiest luck at best betting this season. It has been the worst, the absolute worst. So, yeah, for one, though, I will say this. Uh, the Ryan Blaney pit, I guess it wasn't the worst, but yeah, everybody should have known to have Larson. And anything can happen any given time. I get it, but it's like it's Larson. The record's not that bad. We know he's got a rocket ship, and he proved that today. He just didn't close with the win. So yeah, um, Logano is another one. But I mean, dude, he had he had the poo poos. He had the poo poos, and his car got the poo poos. The poo poos just they, they happen sometimes. I don't know if he t stewed himself. He could have t stewed. But it's very hard for anybody other than Tony Stewart to shit their self and finish a race at the same time. So Logano ended up getting, you know, kind of back up there, but just could not, for the life of him, seal the deal. And he just went back to oblivion. Boom. Now you're in 17th. And that's where you finish. Sucks to suck. But Logano is not always bad. It's just don't play Logano. He's got poo poos. Don't do it. All right. So, Uncle D, things will get better. We love you. Last voicemail from the Garage Fam. Here we go. What up, Garage Fam? It's Troy. Man, what a week. Well, hold on. Hold on. Did you hear that? That's the sound of victory. That is also the sound of a bush light, which I will be consuming heavily. Man, as I was saying, what a weekend. Saturday, no DFS, strictly betting. Took Kyle Busch to win the race, cash that. Also, shout out to Nighthawk, who told me about Ross Chastain, Melon Boy. Took him top three, plus 900, cash that. And today, very light on the DFS. Just basically went straight betting. We got Kyle fucking Busch. 10 to 1. I mean, it was the bushy Mick Bush. How do you not go with him? It was his birthday on top of that. What a weekend. Also, had Kyle over Harvick a lot closer than I thought. I did miss on Byron and Hamlin to win outright, but I don't care. I cashed those bags. I'm still on top. I'm having a good time. Let's keep getting those bags, Garage Fam. Peace out. I love it. Troy, Troy is another one of our guys on Discord. Anytime I hear that somebody had just like had the the hat trick weekend, I am pumped. Dude bet trucks, Xfinity, and Cup, won them all. The Bushy Mac Bush race, baby. Troy, I'm pumped to hear. I mean, yeah, you went loud on the DFS. DFS is obviously I've been a lot better at DFS this season than I have been at straight betting, but he, he gave the shout out to Nighthawk with Chastain, man. And it's like, you know, Dale said it himself. He was like, you know, and, and Nighthawk did too when he called in last week. And he said, you know, Dale, I know you're the man, but maybe I'm the boy. I think Nighthawk is the boy now. Nighthawk is Xfinity boy. Xfinity boy is here and it's Nighthawk. So if you're in the Discord and you're trying to bet on Xfinity, Dale has, has just threw the, the ball into the wind, didn't care. Here comes Nighthawk running in. Here comes the boy, and he got it. 
So you listen to Nighthawk now for Xfinity. Nighthawk, he's swooping in. Hell of a weekend, Troy. Dude, I'm so pumped to hear that. And I get to share the Sunday experience with you. But yeah, 10, you had him at 10 to 1. I had him at 12 to 1. And it was his birthday. And it's the Bushy Mac Bush race. Anybody that did not have money on a bush this week, you, you're, you're an idiot. Like, how could you not? Maybe you're not an idiot. Maybe you just don't bet on, you know, weird shit like that. But I do. So, you know, I don't know. It just it made it just made all the sense in the world to me. Bet on Kyle Bush. Started ninth. His salary was stupid low on DFS and on DraftKings. Like I think he was like in the eight thousand. Like, yeah, I played him. I had him in a couple of lineups. I didn't really like, you know, do a whole lot of like writing about him. I wrote about his brother, which shit the bed, Kurt. That was supposed to be Mac Bush. But, I mean, the place differential looked really nice. So, I didn't know. I, I just knew that, like, if, if Kyle Bush was going to win this race, he was going to just sneak up at the end and take it. So, yeah, I put money on him. And there he is. Uh, beautiful weekend. Thank you for calling. Troy, thank you for calling Uncle D. And Mark, we're glad that you're, you're, you're hitting. Mark Mark is now OG, OG uh, Casino Bet Don of garage guys fancy sports discord so always appreciate when you guys call in keep the calls coming seriously keep those calls coming i love taking voicemails for race recaps it's the best and i just love the garage fam so glad finally got the bag today i'm glad troy got bags anybody else that that decided that they were just gonna get silly and bet the novelty gut boy card so shout out to everybody and then uh, just want to thank everyone that watches our show and listens to us. And don't forget, big news. It's Monday right now. You're listening to this. It's Monday. The big news is going to be coming out Monday night. Twitter, Monday evening. Get ready for it. All right. That's it, guys. I'm out. The Bushy Mac Bush Race weekend is officially over. And we will see you guys next time for some Garage Talk. Be good. Garage fam. Sports, profit, repeat. It's the garage guys. 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 It's it's it's. It's the garage guys. It's it's the garage guys.